Hi, it's Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com, where we instantly improve the lives for families of critically ill patients in intensive care so that you can make informed decisions, have peace of mind, real power, real control, and so that you can influence decision-making fast even if you're not a doctor or a nurse in intensive care. This is another episode of Your Questions Answered, and in last week's episode I answered another question from one of my clients, Emma, and the question last week was part 8 of My sister is in intensive care on a balloon pump and ventilated after cardiac surgery. The intensive care doctors want to stop treatment against our wishes and let her die. What should we do? You can check out last week's episode by clicking on the link below this video. In this week's episode of Your Questions Answered, I want to answer the next question from one of my clients, Emma, which are excerpts from one-on-one -on -one phone and email counseling and consulting sessions with me. And the question this week is part nine of My sister is in intensive care on a balloon pump and ventilated after cardiac surgery. The ICU doctors want to stop treatment against our wishes and let her die. What should we do? You can also access part one to part eight if you're clicking on the links below this video. And if you're watching this on YouTube, go and click on the link below this video. That'll get you to our website where you can access all the other parts of this series of questions from my client, Emma. So in this series of one-on-one -on -one phone and email consulting and advocacy sessions with my client, Emma, you will get real in-depth knowledge about cardiac failure, also known as heart failure in intensive care, how it works, the treatment and therapy options, how to wean somebody off the ventilator, and most importantly, you will discover how to not take no for an answer. You witness how I can lead Emma in going from the intensive care team, trying to basically force her and her family to agree to a withdrawal of to a withdrawal of treatment as being quote unquote in the best interest for her sister to challenge that and the intensive care team having to do everything within their power to save her sister's life and turning the dynamics completely upside down in Emma's favor. Something 99% of families in intensive care are not able to achieve because they're too afraid and they're not seeking outside help. That's what happens when you have the right advice from a professional who knows intensive care inside out and who knows how to manage the dynamics and who can take the fear away of being intimidated by the intensive care team. So enjoy today's consulting and advocacy session. And here it comes. So Emma says, Hi Patrick, I had to return to work on today. Just received a call from my sister's husband. He was in her room when the breathing machine started making a loud sound. He stated that the nurse came in and said that the breathing tube was ill-positioned, so they just went ahead and took it out instead of exchanging it. My brother-in-law said that my sister had been attempting to pull the tube out. I just spoke with my sister's not-so-nice nurse, and I was told that her arterial blood gas is pH 7.5, carbon dioxide is 42, and oxygen levels is 191. Not sure what that means, and my sister is on 6 liter nasal cannula. Her oxygen saturation is 100%, hemoglobin is 8.1, white cell count 13, and she has been taken off the vasopressin and epinephrine. She's now on norepinephrine 6, dobutamine 5, and heparin. Her blood pressure is 105 over 45, the map is 66 and they are continuing continuing to monitor her. Please, what does all of this mean? The nurse got really agitated when I was asking her the questions. Please, I'm at work. Can we correspond by email today until I leave work? Thank you from Emma. So here is my response. Hi, Emma. That's really great news. Your sister is off the ventilator. That's a huge step she has taken. If the tube became dislodged, it was probably time to come out. 
Don't worry about the nurse not being nice because you are asking the right questions. They feel defensive and also threatened. Take it as a compliment. As I mentioned before, 99% of families in intensive care don't question and doctors and nurses in intensive care can pretty much do whatever they, la they like. It's sad, but true. The numbers in the arterial blood gas look good. pH 7.42, normal range is 7.35 till 7.45. The carbon dioxide is 42, normal range is 35 to 45. And the oxygen 191 is normal, normal range is above 75. Those numbers are really good and all the other numbers in the ABG, in the arterial blood gas, you can pretty much ignore for now. pH, carbon dioxide and oxygen level are the most important results to look for. And they look good on 6 litres of oxygen. I pretty much mentioned before there's a good chance your sister will come off the vasopressin and epinephrine when being taken off the ventilator. I'm really glad that's happened for now. That means her heart is coping so far even though she's still on the norepinephrine and dobutamine. But being off the ventilator for now is great and a huge achievement after all this back and forth. Most importantly, we went from the intensive care team wanting to inappropriately seizing life support and inappropriately and also prematurely withdrawing life support and in essence killing your sister to your sister now coming off life support and breathing by herself. What an achievement! This also shows that you always, always need to challenge the assumptions and actions of the intensive care team. If we hadn't challenged the assumptions and if we didn't ask all of the right questions, your sister might be dead by now. Of course, there is no guarantee that your sister will survive, but she has taken a huge step forward. The next challenge to get the heart stronger and get her off the dibutamine and the norepinephrine. Once that's achieved, it's a sign the heart can cope and she will most likely stay off the ventilator and the breathing tube. If she can't come off the vasopressors and inotropes, like the dibutamine and norepinephrine, there's a very good chance your sister may go back on the ventilator and she may potentially die. The next few days will show us which direction she's going. Hemoglobin is still a little bit low at 8.1. Normal range is between 12 to 15.5 in females and they may have to give her another unit of blood or red packed cells. White cell count at 13 is slightly elevated, the normal range is 4 to 11, and she may still have an infection somewhere. Getting the white cell count down might also help in reducing the norepinephrine, but let's take one step at the time. Blood pressure 105 over 45 with a map of 66 is just about okay, especially the 45, the diastolic pressure suggests, suggests that she's still a little bit dry with all the fluid removal from the dialysis machine. It will be important to keep her still dry over the next few days to make sure the lungs don't fill up with water. That would be really bad. Please keep asking all the questions to the nurses and doctors, no matter their response. They know by now that you have done a crash course in intensive care and they know by now that you can't be fooled. The most important part for now is to keep your sister off the ventilator and the way forward is most likely a combination of giving her oxygen, keep the dialysis machine going and remove fluids to offload the heart so it doesn't have to pump too many fluids around and most importantly it doesn't push fluids back into the lungs. A weak heart can't cope with fluid overload. Therefore, fluids might be pushed back into the lungs causing respiratory failure with your sister needing mechanical ventilation again. Therefore, with a weak heart and kidney failure, keeping the dialysis machine going is important to offload the heart, keeping excess fluids out of the lungs. They also need to look at why the white cell count is still slightly elevated and you may have to ask them why they think the white cell count is elevated. As long as they keep your sister dry by removing fluids with the dialysis machine, 
She may not be able to get off the norepinephrine, but for now the goal is to keep her off the ventilator. And given that she's off the vasopressin and the epinephrine, she's taken big steps already. Overall, I'm very pleased with your sister's progress. Again, give yourself a pat on your back for seeking help, for asking the right questions and for not taking no for an answer. Here are the next steps, Emma. Physical therapy or physiotherapy with a focus on breathing exercises, strengthening her breathing muscles, starting to get strength back in her arms and legs, as well as sitting out of bed or sitting on the edge of the bed to begin with. Next, echocardiogram or ultrasound of the heart with a new assessment of the contractility, also known as pump function of the heart. This will give the doctors renewed readings of the ejection fraction, also known as EF. I'm positive that EF has improved and remains 50% or more which is one of the reasons why she's off the vasopressin and the epinephrine. With an improved ejection fraction, they can hopefully start weaning the dobutamine and the norepinephrine. This could well take a few more days. However, as you know by now, nothing happens fast in intensive care. Therefore, be patient and don't be discouraged if it doesn't happen straight away. They will need to keep monitoring her arterial blood gases over the next few days especially the carbon dioxide and oxygen levels in the blood. These are the most important parameters to look for, as well as ensuring your sister can produce a good, strong cough. Keep in mind, one of the most important factors to keep your sister off the ventilator is to sit up in bed if she can't get out of bed yet. One of the most common complications in intensive care for bedridden patients is a pneumonia because of the immobility. Therefore, the lungs can't expand fully, which is causing the pneumonia. Therefore, ongoing breathing exercises, deep breaths and coughing will be very, very important going forward. Furthermore, from what I can see, they will need to continue to be aggressively removing fluids via the dialysis machine to keep fluids off the heart and the lungs. Too many fluids could decompensate the heart and set back your sister. The blood pressure of around 100 over 40 with a map of 65 suggests she's dry and that they are aggressively removing fluids. This could also put a delay in weaning off the norepinephrine in particular, as the norepinephrine is used for managing a low blood pressure. The more fluids are being removed, the more likely it is that your sister has a low blood pressure, hence more need for the norepinephrine. Once your sister's heart is off the dobutamine, they may be able to slow down fluid removal slightly via the dialysis machine. Also, speak to one of the doctors and find out what they want to meet about. Don't let them get away with a vague answer let them be clear. As I said, I would be very happy to dial into the meeting over the phone. Also, with aggressive fluid removal from this dialysis machine, they will need to keep an eye on your sister's potassium and magnesium levels. I'm certain they are replacing potassium already and they can monitor the potassium levels in the arterial blood gases. Potassium levels should be between 4.5 and 5. 0 0.0 millimole. The, this level is quite important because a higher or a lower level could cause an irregular heart rhythm such as AFib, also known as A-flutter or AF. I understand she hasn't had any AF, but I think the more you understand, the better, and you can start questioning more. Hopefully your sister will continue to improve going forward. I hope that helps for now, Emma. It's great news. Again, give yourself a pat on your back for being so strong and giving your sister a second chance at life. I will give you a call a bit later in the evening, your time. If you need anything in the meantime, please let me know and I can give you a call earlier. Now, and if you've watched so far and you want one-on-one -on -one consulting and counselling and advocacy with me, click on the consulting tabs on the top of the website and select from the options that work best for you. 
Here is Emma's response. Hi Patrick, thank you for all of this. Me and my family really appreciate you doing this and having you as a consultant and advocate on board. I was able to speak with the intensive care doctor tonight. I expressed my concern with the need for my sister to have physical therapy and breathing exercises and an ultrasound. The doctor said that he would put in orders for each of these as requested. The doctor informed me and my sister's husband that due to my sister's change in status, the doctor whom originally said that my sister's surgery would not be performed in that hospital, will be meeting in some committee and with cardiology to determine whether or not they are willing to do my sister's surgery since she has a change in status. This doctor also told me that they would know something by tomorrow at 9 o'clock a.m. and that they will speak with the family at that time. I explained to this doctor that we would like an agenda prior to this family meeting. Also, I questioned the doctor concerning my sister's elevated white cell count source and he stated sepsis. Originally, the doctors told me she had bacteremia. Please advise from Emma. Here is my response. Hi Emma, I'm glad you continue to make requests to them. Well done. Let's wait and see if he follows through with the orders and let's judge him on his actions and not his words. I'm really glad that the surgeon is now consulting with cardiology to explore the option for surgery for your sister. I would imagine that after this consultation has taken place, they might ask for a meeting with you. There clearly and evidently has been a change in status of your sister's condition. Going from the balloon pump with the outlook of no chance of survival, without the balloon pump and the intensive care team inappropriately wanting to withdraw treatment without your consent, to now having her off the ventilator, breathing by herself and having the inotropes and vasopressors reduced significantly warrants a reassessment of your sister's situation. But find out about the meeting agenda first. Having said all of that, I do believe that doing the surgery might well be an option now. And it also comes down to if they think your sister is well enough to go into lengthy and also risky open heart surgery procedure. I'm sure they will weigh up the pros and cons for that. As it relates to the white cell count, there must be an infection or sepsis somewhere and it's their job to find out where the infection is located. Ways to find out are doing a chest x-ray plus sputum sample from the lungs to determine if she has a chest infection or pneumonia. Also doing a urine sample if she makes any urine at all to check for urinary tract infection. Next, they need to do blood cultures and checking for bloodstream infections. Also need to do swaps from any lines, including central line, arterial line and the dialysis catheter. Next, poten potentially changing the central line and the arterial line if it's greater than seven days in due to the increased infection risk. Once they found the source of infection and the bacteria or virus or fungus, then they need to treat appropriately. If they can't find any sources of infection, they need to change all the lines, central line, arterial line and the dialysis catheter. If you are talking to the doctors tomorrow and you need my help, please give me a call anytime. Any questions in the meantime, please let me know. Look out for part 10 in this consulting and advocacy session with my client Emma. It'll come out in the next few days. So, how can you become the best advocate for your critically ill loved one? How can you make informed decisions, get peace of mind, control, power and influence quickly whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care? Well, you get to that all important feeling of making informed decisions, get peace of mind, control, power and influence when you download your free instant impact report now by entering your email below. In your free instant impact report, you will learn quickly how to make informed decisions, get peace of mind, 
real power and real control, and how you can influence decision-making fast whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. Your free Instant Impact Report gives you in-depth insight that you must know whilst your loved one is critically ill or is even dying in intensive care. Sign up and download your free Instant Impact Report now by entering your email below. In your free Instant Impact Report, you will learn how to speak the secret intensive care language so that the doctors and the nurses know straight away that you are an insider and that you know and understand what is really happening in intensive care. In your free report, you will also discover how to ask the doctors and the nurses the right questions. Discover the many competing interests in intensive care and how your critically ill loved one's treatment may depend on those competing interests. How to eliminate fear, frustration, stress, struggle and vulnerability even if your loved one is dying. You get five mind-blowing tips and strategies helping you to get on the right path to making informed decisions, get peace of mind, control, power and influence in your situation. You will get real-world examples that you can easily adapt to your and your critically ill loved one situation. How to stop being intimidated by the intensive care team and how you will be seen as equals. You will get crucial behind the scenes insight so that you know and understand what is really happening in intensive care and how you need to manage doctors and nurses in intensive care. And it's not what you think. Thank you for tuning into this week's Your Questions Answered episode and I'll see you again next week in another update. Make sure you also check out our blog section for more tips and strategies. And you can also send me an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com with your questions. Or you, can or you can call me, find international phone numbers on the top of the website. Also, have a look at our ebook section where you get more ebooks, videos and audio recordings and where you can also get one-on-one -on -one counseling, consulting and advocacy with me via Skype over the phone or via email by clicking on the products tab. This is Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com and I'll see you again next week in another